Hello everyone, my name is John, and today I am releasing an army. I just got a package of beneficial insects, some predators that I'm gonna release onto all my plants, and I wanted to share this with you because I did this for the first time last year, and it was, it was really, really cool. So I ordered 25,000, which is the smallest amount you can order, um, Hypoaspis miles, also called Stratioleleps schematus, um, these guys eat all kinds of bad things, but especially they destroy all the fungus gnat larvae. So they're not going to eat any adult fungus gnats. So if you use yellow sticky traps, that's going to help. But last year at the peak of my collection, I had over hundred plants and it just wasn't really feasible to go around sprinkling them with BTI or adding a BTI type solution, which is very effective for fungus gnats, but it's hard to do on a large number of plants. So I released some of these into every single pot in my home and the fungus gnats were totally gone in a couple weeks and they've been gone for many, many months now. And now we're starting to come into spring and I've noticed a few fungus gnats flying around inside my humidity bins. I've been experimenting with wetter soils than I used to use. So this is gonna be a great thing to do. I'm gonna try and make it a yearly release and see if that's enough for my needs. But I also bought a blend of other predatory mites that go up into the leaves, into the canopy and munch on, snack on spider mites. So that's really cool because treating for spider mites is pretty cumbersome. So you have to take your plant to the sink or the bathtub and spray it, let it dry, bring it back. Hopefully you're not dripping everywhere. It's a rather time consuming process and it needs to be repeated several times in order to be totally effective. So I'm hoping I can just release these and let them do their thing. Now I got them both, they both come in like vials or tubes and you could also get these disbursement pouches which you would basically hang in a tree or in a larger plant. If you had a ton of plants, large plants, greenhouse and you release them into there and that way they make their way up to the canopy more quickly. But that is what they do, that's how they survive so they're gonna find their way up there and they're gonna find some things to eat. Now for the Hypoaspis miles, which I released last year, I still am seeing some of those in some of my pots. So they'll find other things, after they've done all of their work, they'll find other things to eat. So like some fungus in the soil, some, some mold spores, some bark. It, they'll find decaying matter and they'll clean that up for you. So really, I've been really, really happy with those. A anytime I see those little guys crawling around on the pots. They come out after you water. Usually you'll see them wandering around. I just feel really good. I know that that plant is in good hands. So I'm super excited to do this again. And I hope that a lot more people will get into this because the idea of releasing bugs on purpose into your home is really scary. And anytime I tell someone about it, it's the first thing they ask is, in your home? Like, won't there just be bugs everywhere? And I've never noticed them anywhere. They seem to like to stick to the pots. Somehow I'm sure they're traveling from plant to plant at least some of the time, but I've never noticed it. All they wanna do is stay alive and eat all those other nasty things which could be harming your plants. So I'm gonna crack this open. We gotta release them today. So here you can see you need to pay for overnight shipping with these because they are alive and they will die. Um, luckily the company I ordered from, naturesgoodguys.com, they're located in California, not too far from me. So the overnight shipping cost is not that much. It paid, I paid 12 bucks for overnight shipping. Not a big deal. Oh great, <laughs> they've given me a nice infographic. So here's the new one that I ordered, this special blend predatory mites. So these will eat all kinds of things, um, but they're specialists at destroying spider mites. All right, anyways. Okay, so this is the container of Hypoaspis miles, Stratioleles, Stratioleleps simitus. So these guys live in the soil. They'll munch on the fungus gnat larvae especially, but also root aphids and thrips larvae, anything like that. It says these are good for spider mites too, but they don't, they prefer to stay in the soil. They're not gonna wander out into the leaves all the time. Here's Nature's Good Guys Special Blend. Oh man. Okay, so this thing is crawling with little warriors. It's it's really is. I'll try to get a close up of that. Okay, so just look at all of them. These little red guys running around in there. They look hungry. Last time I ordered this, I didn't really see them crawling around in there, 
but they ship these in all life cycles. So there's gonna be some adults, there's gonna be some eggs, there's gonna be some larva, pupa, whatever stages they go through, I don't really know. So you might not see it crawling right away, but for sure I noticed a lot of them in my pots after a couple days or a week. So what I did last time with this is I put them out into another container, part of this at a time, and I just went around scooping a teaspoon onto every plant, which is way more than enough, totally good to go. And then afterwards there's leftover, I did, I did some more and distributed it around and I made sure to put quite a bit in my outdoor plants as well so that they can hopefully have enough to repopulate and survive out there for a long time. Now these guys are in much more concentrated containers. So, all right, so they're really like racing around in here. So um, I was gonna dump them into like a larger container and then like scoop them. They'll probably be crawling all over the place pretty quickly. So I'm gonna think about what's best to do. I'll figure it out, I'll get back to you. Okay, so we're just gonna sprinkle a teeny tiny amount. Oh, ho, ho. okay, so I'm gonna go do that to all of my plants. Okay, so I just got the entire special blend of mites, that three mite blend that Love spider mites. I uh, got those released on all my plants. I just sprinkled a little bit. I did two full rounds through all my plants. So hopefully there's at least some that made it into every single pot. And then you're supposed to leave the lids and containers just out. I, I left them in some of the pots that I thought needed it the most. So there's some in there that are just gonna crawl out over the rest of the evening or so. So one thing that I realized, I was gonna release all those hypoaspis miles, but I was planning to do a handful of repots tomorrow and it'd be kind of silly to sprinkle those on my plots tonight and then change out the soil tomorrow. So they're gonna survive overnight. You can store them for a couple days, it's okay. So I'm gonna wake up and do some repots and then release all of those. So next year I'm definitely gonna get all my repots done, late February, early March, as things start growing and then I'll place the order for these beneficial insects. Now I could already see these mites making their way up and crawling around on some of the leaves. So they're very active. They are surging for food right away. I love that. So I'm gonna let these things explore their new world and I will check back with you in the morning. Peace. All right, so I'm back and it's actually been several months and I have no idea what happened to the rest of the footage I shot for this video, but that's okay because all I need to tell you is that this was a partial success this year and I believe it would have worked really well just like the first time, except that I probably repotted about half of my plants since the release of all of these insects. So I had a bunch of repots planned, I did those. Then I started propagating a bunch of things into soil mixes and I just started getting lots of good results with these new mixes I was testing. And so then I started getting excited and repotting even more plants and so yeah, I probably have some, I probably have these hypoaspis miles in like less than half of my plants at this point. So obviously it's not going to be very effective. So please learn from my mistake. And you know, next year I'm gonna make sure I get all my repots done as much as possible sometime in March, probably the second half of March, depending on when things start growing. And then I'll place my order for these insects, you know, at the start of April or right after that. Okay, so um, one other thing is that special blend did not help my spider mite problem at all. Um, and in fact, after I released those, I felt safe. I felt like they were gonna work because I saw them crawling on the plants. It was like I could actually see them doing their thing. Um, so now here I am a few months later and I have a pretty big spider mite problem, especially because I'm in this new bedroom here and I probably have 40 plants all crammed together. All the leaves are touching each other. Um, yeah, so, that didn't work at all and maybe because I released them too late and the spider mite problem was already bigger than I thought. But what my big takeaway was from that is that in that blend, because there were three different predators in that blend, one of those predators is always talked about as the number one beneficial insect for countering spider mites. So next time, instead of getting a blend where that number one killer only makes up one third of it, I would just invest that money into 100% order of that spider mite specialist. And I hope that that would do a much better job. Now, so I'm in the middle of doing several rounds of spraying my plants with neem and soap to take care of the spider mites. So that's gonna leave, um, that's gonna have some residual effects. So I cannot place another order for those spider mite predators right now because I need to go through another round or two 
of neem um, and that will also cause problems for those. So just wanna let you know about that. Um, if you do want to counteract spider mites specifically, just get the one single predator that is going to do the best job with those. And of course, you'll see the name on the screen right now. So luckily, of course, there are other things you can do. You know, we can use the yellow sticky traps. There's some fungal myco insecticides you can use. And we always have BTI, which is really helpful. But I really, I really think the beneficial insects are super cool because you release them and then they continue repopulating and growing. And they should be self-sustaining, at least for long enough to help get rid of your pest problems. So the biggest takeaway I want you to have from this video is that this stuff does work and there's not gonna be bugs crawling all over your face when you're sleeping, um, as sometimes I know people are afraid <laughs> of that, but uh, yeah, it works. They, I don't see them anywhere in my house. They stick to the pots and um, they definitely, definitely do a good job, but you gotta keep them in the soil so don't be a fool like I was and repot all your plants after you release them. So I'd love to hear what you think. Anyone nervous about this? Um, releasing bugs on purpose into the home? Or are you excited about this? Have you tried it? Do you wanna try it? Um, definitely, I would love to hear all of your thoughts about it. And if you enjoyed the video, please give me a favor and hit the like button. And I hope you'll consider subscribing if you have not already. And for more plant content like this, you can also head over to my Instagram at Enlightened Gardener. Love to see more of you over there as well. But thank you so much for making it this far into the video and I hope to see you in the next one. All right, peace.